Hey everybody and welcome back to another devlog of Sharks and Alpacas, my little Python game development project I started a few months ago. Last time we figured out that the part that makes crafting satisfying is not necessarily gathering the resources, but discovering how to craft something or even stumbling across new items accidentally. To emulate this, we implemented a crafting minigame based on finding patterns in a hexagonal grid. Since the last devlog I implemented a few more crafting patterns for some basic items like the spear. And I can also craft the first placeable structure now, a fence post. I just need to implement the actual placement of structures. But before I can get started on that, I will meet my wife about an hour outside of Tokyo today to explore the area and visit a hot spring, which is one of the nicest perks of living in Japan. Alright, I'm back, all refreshed and ready to tackle our next obstacles if it wasn't for a little distraction I came across. So OpenAI just released the latest version of its image generation model, DALI. And you can actually access it for free using Bing. Long story short, I couldn't resist and spent a few hours playing around with it. Quite impressive, isn't it? And possibly even useful down the road. But now let's get back on track and implement that structure class. Right now there are two main distinct types of game objects. Objects that are bound to tile coordinates, like trees for example, and objects that have free xy coordinates, like animals or items. I decided to constrain structures to tile coordinates. This will make it much easier to determine if a structure is placeable on a particular tile or not. And with a few more tweaks and changes to the player action code, we can already pick up our fence and place it. But now it's time to enjoy the remains of this weekend a bit and go on a little day hike. It is now already Thursday morning and I'm a bit in a dilemma here. Visually, I want to work on connecting the fence posts. Since I'm using vector graphics for everything, I could probably just generate some polygons between the posts. But logically, I should hold off on that a bit until I have a few more applications so I can make the code more generally usable. Instead, I have to do some work on the hitboxes. So far, I've coded in a specific hitbox for the tree trunk and tweaked it so it looks kinda alright. Alpacas aren't even affected by hitboxes yet either. I decided to change the hitbox system to be tile-based as well. Occupied tiles will be completely off-limits for any player or animals. This makes the code a lot cleaner and easier to generalize. All I had to do was include a list of block tiles in the raycasting function that checks for collisions. And because this was done much faster than I expected, I couldn't resist to use the remaining time to add the visual connections between the fence posts after all. With that, it is actually already possible to fence in your alpacas. If you have a lot of patience, that is. Next time, I want to think a bit more about the core gameplay loop and possibly lay out a roadmap. But this is going to be it for this devlog. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you all again in the next one.